Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 18.5 in the Alice tutorial series. Uh, in lesson 18.5 we're going to continue what we started in 18.4 which was a mouse over and hover event tracker in Alice. Now if you haven't gone through lesson 18.4 uh, when we pop into Alice here after this introduction, we'll have a program on the screen that we created in the last video. If you haven't followed through the last video, I would recommend going back through 18.4 and building the program along with us. Certainly, I hope you get something out of Lesson 18.5 if you haven't done that, but it will be really difficult to follow along with the hover events if you haven't built that world. So let's go ahead and get started with Lesson 18.5 and continue making different mouse over and hover events in our Alice program. So here we are back in our Alice world uh, from the last video we did. If we hit play, you can just see that we have a program that is able to track the mouse hover events, and we've got it set so that it can check a mouse over on region 5 right now. So the second our mouse leaves region number 5, that green box will disappear. And you can note that there are no mouse clicks that are necessary. That just happens naturally. Now, pairing this with what we did in the last video, you could eventually build this into a mouse click as well, but what we want to do is let's pair this with some 3D text. Let's imagine we're writing a game in which the user is supposed to click on something in region number six. So we're using this region right here. I want to give the user live feedback instead of having the region highlighted like we have here for region five. I want to give some written feedback to my user. So we're going to be using region six and we'll need to start by adding some 3D to our world. So let's go ahead and click on Add Objects. And in our local gallery, we are going to go to 3D Text. And I'm going to do this in Times New Roman, since that's a font that most people have. And I'm going to just say, you are in the, and then I'm going to put a bunch of spaces. And so I think that's probably about 10 spaces right there. And you'll see what I'm doing in a second. So you are in the blank region. Eventually, I'm going to add 3D text later that will either say correct or incorrect. So this is just kind of going to be placeholder text. So let's add this to the world. And of course, that was way too large. So uh, In order to get a hold of that, let's drop a dummy camera right here. We'll just call that dummy camera number one. That way we can back out and get a hold of this uh, that we just wrote here. We're going to want this to be in a different color. So I'm going to put this into a blue color. And let's highlight this, whoops, uh, we, we want to have this turn to face the camera. So method, turn to face, camera, and we're going to resize it definitely so that it fits on the billboard that we're using. And we'll probably go with something like that. Now that we have it in front of our billboard, we can jump to our dummy camera and zoom back into where we were. I'm going to move this, whoops, make sure you get a hold of your uh, 3D text and not the billboard. And then we just need to move it over to the left a little bit. Awesome. So this is going to be my visual feedback to the user. Uh, of course, this is in region number five, but this is going to track whether or not the user's in region number six. So I'm going to rename this text right here, and we're going to call this you know, placeholder text or something more creative. We're going to have to add one more bit of 3D text as well, and that's going to be the either correct or incorrect, depending on where the mouse is. So let's add one more bit of 3D text using Times New Roman. And I'm going to have it default to incorrect. Get that added to the world. And we'll resize this or have it turn to face the camera. So method turn to face camera. And of course, white on white doesn't look really good. So when the user is incorrect, we'll have that show in, we'll use a magenta color. And we'll resize this so it fits in between your, the blank in the and region. So we've got that size that probably has to be a little bit smaller. So let's make sure that we grab our 3D text. Yep, definitely need to make that a little bit smaller and move it over so that it's kind of centered. And 
And that looks about right there. And let's see what this looks like in our world. So this will make the screen a little bit bigger. Hit play. And so right now I'm getting feedback. You are in the incorrect region. What I want to happen is whenever the mouse is over region number six, I want this to change to correct. So let's start adding code to make that happen. So we'll start, we'll resize this window back to smaller so that we have more room to work with our code. And just like I did over here, I'm going to add this to my mouse checking region. I'm also going to check all the regions at the same time using a do together statement. So I'm going to add a new if check. And just like last time, let's add four and clauses. So true and true and true. Now the bit of information that I need is the top left and lower right of the correct region. So let's hit play and write down where region six can be found. And region six can be found at an X coordinate of 751 and a Y coordinate of 165. So 751, 165 is the top left. And the lower right of my quadrant is going to be the point 961, 448. With that information, I can then go back into my method and program that in so that my mouse can detect when it's over region number six. So let's go to our world and properties where we have the XY variable stored. And like we just determined right there, we need to make sure that X is greater than or equal to 751 and x is less than or equal to so less than or equal to 961 and you'll notice that the greater than or equal to here at 751 is the same as the less than or equal to for this check right here that's because this line between 5 and 6 is the x value of 751 so it's not uncommon especially if you have shared borders with the regions to have the same numbers. So let's go ahead and add our y values in here and we determined that y had to be greater than 165 or 166 because this is going to be the same y values as our first check because it's going to be in the same column. So we could actually use 166 and 448 here. So let's make sure that y is less than or equal to 448. And this is, starts to get a little bit confusing looking at it sometimes. So you might want to add comments as well to let you know what region each of these checks are making. So this is a check for region number five. And then this one down here is going to be a check for region number six. So we'll check for region number six here. And it's not necessary to add these comments, but it is certainly something that if you do a lot of different checks will be a good habit to get into. What we want to do is simply adjust this 3D text. So we're going to call this uh, correct message or just something other than 3D text. If we are in region number six, then I want the color of the correct message to be green. I want the text to read not incorrect, but I want it to read correct. So we'll do that by dragging over this uh, string text box. And so the color will be set to green and the message text will be correct. And we want that to happen together. So we'll put this in a do together block and have both of these occur over a duration of zero seconds. Now, whenever, the, whenever we're not in region number six, we want it to go to its current message. So let's just copy this block right here and drag it to the else clause. This else clause will be whenever the region is anywhere other than six. We want the color sent to magenta and we want the message not to say correct, but incorrect. So this is our check for region number six. Whenever we're in region number six, we should get a green message that reads correct. Otherwise, we get a magenta message that reads incorrect. Hitting play, we can go ahead and test our world now. So let's hit play, and we can see that region 5 is still working correctly. 
and circling region 6, I'm not getting any sort of reaction out of this you are in the incorrect region message. But as soon as I enter region number 6, you can see it's reading you are in the correct region. And again, this is happening without any mouse clicks whatsoever. Just if our, our mouse is hovering over region number 6, it's letting me know through 3D text that I'm in the correct region and in the incorrect region anywhere else. By doing this, I can have special things happen in any of these regions or any parts of these regions right here. And so there you have it. There is no challenge program for Lesson 18.5, but this is something that you probably want to practice both, both this and making mouse click events. It's going to be a big part of Lesson number 19, and in Lesson number 19, we are going to create a point-and-click adventure game from kind of start to finish. It will probably only end up being three or four screens, but it will give you the idea of how you can make your own really epic point-and-click adventure games in Alice. Now, Lesson 19 might be among the most ambitious tutorials that I've ever taken. I don't know how many videos it's going to take, but there's certainly a lot of moving parts to the game we're going to be writing. So I'm looking forward to making that video, but it all hinges on understanding how mouse tracking works. So make sure that you understand how to do that and what the coordinates are and make sure that those make sense because in lesson number 19 we'll use that pretty extensively as well as add some new techniques. But we're going to make some really cool Alice programs now. I think if you follow the tutorial up to this point right here, you can make some really neat video games and we certainly want to start doing that instead of learning techniques. So I uh, appreciate everybody's support of the Alice tutorial series. As always, if you have any questions or if there's anything that I can help you out with to make your programs run a little bit better, leave those in the comments and I will certainly be happy to help you out. So thanks again and have a great day.